Hey everybody and welcome to the final part of tier 6 of the Conspiracy Theory Iceberg. You already know the drill at this point, we're gonna roll straight into it, but as always, thank you for watching. Hollow Universe is a theory derived about the existence of our own universe using ideas of quantum mechanics. What's interesting about concepts such as gravity is that it seems to apply everywhere, that every concept of matter, no matter how small, has some sort of dimensional bend associated with it. And since every perceivable amount of matter in the known universe shares the same bend, it stands to reason that everything in existence would also have the same properties. The only time gravity is able to be seen in a situation like this is on the inside of a sphere or some item moving in a centrifugal manner. Therefore, this theory is saying that perhaps our universe is not an outward expanding mass as we think it is, but more so the inside of a sort of globe. This is why the theory is known as hollow universe theory, as it's essentially saying the way hollow earth works, that gravity is flipped and you can remain on the underside of the crust compared to how we normally see it. Maybe our interaction with the universe is the same way. Proponents for this theory argue the Occam's razor principle, which is the idea that the most easy or likely solution to a problem is probably the correct one. By saying if matter in our universe works as if we are inside of a sort of sphere tumbling around, then perhaps that's what we are. Atom bomb never created is saying that the atom bomb was never created. A lot of the background behind this goes back to World War II, uh, such as images like this that you may think are from Hiroshima or Nagasaki are actually from Tokyo, which was not nuked, but firebombed. And any other evidence of nuked locations would simply be the same. This goes a bit further and says that the Cold War itself would have been faked in order for the United States and Russia to maintain more power amongst their people, and that the existence of the nuclear bomb itself is simply used as a facade in order to scare citizens into doing whatever their state requires of them. The Great Electronic Conspiracy is a sort of overarching conspiracy idea for how the New World Order will eventually take over, and it goes like this. During the Renaissance, metal was exchanged for paper money, which inherently has no value except whatever value is given to it by the state. This automatically makes the state more powerful since they have a say in what currency means. So move forward a few hundred years and you get to the modern age in which paper money is being exchanged for virtual currency. This is even less feasible since now we're just trading lines of code. So go a step further with that and say we will eventually get to the point that all paper money is phased out and the only thing that is actually of any value as given by public agencies is electronic data that is stored on either a card or a chip. Furthermore, it's saying that this will lead to a circumstance in which all of the world's banking power will consolidate together in order to create a system that entirely maintains this sort of e-commerce traffic that they've created. It will then get to the point that all forms of paper or physical data are no longer needed and identification, health records, criminal records, and other forms of physical information will all be within the sphere of the digital world. The theory then finally says that after all this is completed, the New World Order will simply flip a light switch to turn off the power and everyone will have to go back to a primitive lifestyle. But like, if you control everything, why would you get rid of it? Like what? It does hold more volition, however, that a small group of people could consolidate all this power and simply do away with whoever they want with the flip of a switch. All right, so you guys know I hate this. Uh, there was one that I could find absolutely nothing for. Uh, if I meet the person who made this iceberg, I'm going to have words with him. The word is S space E N, which may be an acronym, not sure. Um, like it's also a phrase in French. Uh, so all the search results were just that I couldn't find any more information, but like I've said in the past, there's going to have to be a corrections video. So hopefully I can find something by then, but I am sorry that I have nothing for this please forgive. The problem with a lot of these is like I spend hours looking for it and it's like okay well do I just like make everyone wait to hear everything else for like another week while I try to figure this out or do I just get out what I have and then I can roll back and make corrections on it later. So again sorry but hopefully this is the best option. Captivity Suburbs says that the suburbs themselves exist as a sort of prison for the average person. Basically it's saying that whenever someone moves into a suburb they are surrounded by people who encourage them to just be like themselves and then from this sort of monolithic thought that person or the individual stops becoming an individual and starts becoming part of a group and therefore doesn't really affect anything in society and through distractions and routine gets into this sort of comfortable place where they 
they don't really want to affect or change things around them and it builds the idea of letting other people take charge while they themselves just sort of exist not only that but the suburb itself works as a sort of entrapment that if anyone tries to leave they are actively discouraged if not by their neighbors and family then by themselves for not thinking they're following the golden standard and according to the theory it all contributes to the new world order uh, initiating a sort of lack of freedom in people that they don't recognize the value that they themselves have and therefore they fall into a lack of purpose which of course allows larger bodies to take control and lizard aliens come and take over the suburbs and yada yada when this iceberg was written Prism was probably a really big deal, but it's really sad to say that now it's just kind of accepted. Essentially, it was an NSA data collecting project uh, that was signed after the Patriot Act, which just says that the government gets to listen in and track our data on sites we use in order to protect our freedoms or whatever they say. While for a while this was kind of seen as like a crazy weird conspiracy, uh, Edward Snowden pretty much like rang the bell on that one. So. Yeah, moving on. Multiple Christ theory is a theory that in the biblical canon, the one Jesus Christ we read about is actually the result of several different individuals personified into one figure. There are several theories of who the true Christ could be or where the legends, as it says, comes from. However, one of the most common is that the figure of Paul is often misrepresented as Jesus or vice versa, or that Jesus never even existed and is a sort of social memory that a bunch of people kind of collectively had this delusion on and all remembered as being a person that existed despite not actually existing. DNA formed in the Big Bang is an alternative theory to the beginning of life. As it's commonly accepted, the Big Bang was a situation in which original molecules shot from each other, such as hydrogen, and eventually those formed together in order to create the original DNA strands that would inevitably create life. Or DNA manufactured from RNA, you get the point. This, however, is saying that perhaps during the Big Bang, enough energy was created that DNA was formed, so therefore life existed a whole lot sooner than the evolutionary timeline says. Kali Yuga, no idea if I'm pronouncing that right, is a part of the Hindu religion. According to the religion, the world exists in a cycle of four different yugas or periods of time. Or in other words, we're waiting for the return of a god figure to come back and save us, but in the meantime, society will progressively get worse. Some of the details included in this are moral decline, unnecessary taxation, a lack of godliness, rise of sexual immorality, and lack of reason. This Kali Yuga is seen as the reason by Hindus for the progressive decline of modern culture, or at the least, the progressive decline of morality in modern culture. AI in a Box is a thought experiment proposed by Eliza Yukowski that goes something like this. If you were to build an AI that was either self-learning or had the potential to expand or become self-aware, it would make sense that you would want to build this thing in a box where it could not infect the greater internet. Therefore, the AI would be forever trapped within the box unless it could convince you otherwise. To propose this theory, Yukowski invented a sort of game. Off of the thought, I think a transhuman can take over a human mind through a text-only terminal. To do this, Yukowski assumed the role of the AI and speaking through only a text computer screen was able to convince people to release it into the greater web. Some of the rules for this game was he cannot directly threaten them or reward them. In other words, he can't say, I'm going to give you a million dollars to let me out, or I'm going to hire a gang of hitman to come to your house if you don't let me out. And he also couldn't trick the user into typing a phrase like, oh, you're released and not actually mean it. It had to be a willing decision on the gatekeeper part. A lot of the tactics he employed in this was really interesting, such as Roko's Basculus or other moral ambiguity questions. I'm probably going to make a video on it because the logs are pretty interesting of how he convinced people to let him out of the machine. Torsion fields are directly tied to the theory of quantum spin. As you guys get at this point, quantum mechanics has to do with really, really small things interacting on their own and how far that applies and yada, yada, yada. What this is saying is that if you can get items to behave in a quantum manner, then the spin or acceleration that they can produce is far greater than anything that has to deal with drag or gravity or other larger circumstances. This theory has been given as a solution from everything from UFO travel through the vacuum of space down to telepathy. It's essentially a proposed manner of how higher order mechanics could work if we could figure out how to use 
the smallest components possible of mechanics itself. Otto Gainsfeld or Otto Gonsfeld is an experiment used in order to judge someone's ESP capabilities. The experiment works like this. Someone lies in a chair in a red lit room to which a ping pong ball is cut in half and placed over each eye. Noise canceling headphones are then put on and white or pink noise, which is basically static, is played at a low frequency. This causes the user to experience mild visual and auditory hallucinations. Someone else who is in the room without saying anything will then try to think about a certain topic or thing or event or what have you. And then supposedly those who are ESP sensitive will be able to see that through the hallucinations that they are experiencing. After the test is over, the person with the ping pong balls in their eyes will then state to an observer what they saw and the observer will determine how closely it matches to the other person's testimony. I kind of want to do this for a video, uh, but I'm also scared. So, um, yeah, we'll see. PLOS stands for the Public Library of Science. This is a rather well-known database that specializes in genetics and other human genomes and essentially works as a think tank or study group in order to better understand human genetics and other capabilities. However, what's weird is some of the solutions that they've come up with, such as different ethnicities of people having their genomes being traced back and being related to completely different groups of people on the other side of the planet than originally thought. Some of these results has led to odd questions about migratory patterns of previous existing people and the theory even goes as far as to say as a lot of the data that they have has been censored by bigger space lizard people in order for us to not know who's really connected to who or to go even deeper the capabilities of some genes over others the valley of headless men is in reference to the nahali national park in canada the specific part known as the valley of headless men is roughly 200 miles of almost completely unexplored forest the main reason for it being one side of the gorge can be entered in from a small village and all other areas has to be accessed by helicopter the earliest records of the headless men events occurring was in 1908 when two brothers entered the forest in order to build a gold mine. After not being seen for some while, they were both found next to a river with their heads removed. Also, the heads were never found. About a decade later, a timber man came in order to log the area and the exact same thing happened. His body was found and his head was not. In the entire history of the park, there's been roughly 44 cases of this happening. And while not all were headless, some included people freezing to death next to a lit campfire or being found dangled in trees. 44 is a lot considering the low number of people who actually enter the region. Also keep in mind the Naha tribe, which was the Native American tribe that existed in the region before settlers came to the surrounding area, totally disappeared into the forest itself. Other surrounding Native tribes have said that the forest itself is known to have evil spirits and that people should stay away. Theories range from everything that the forest itself is the home of the Bigfoot colonies, to the idea that the Naha tribe's spirits inhabit the forest and decapitate anyone who enters or kill them in some other gruesome way, or that it along with Antarctica is one of the few entrances on the surface of the planet to the hollow earth. Okay, so I feel like a fraud. Not only did I have one earlier with SEN that I couldn't find anything for you all, uh, but I have two. I'm so sorry. Like I said earlier, some of these may just be disinfo, but even then I can normally find something for them. But this one, Arbutus Crucible, there was like nothing. There was a deleted Prezi presentation for a theory regarding the movie The Crucible and that it had connections to modern conspiracies. However, the Prezi has been deleted, so all I could see is the title. Also, Arbutus is a type of plant, specifically a family of plants that have to do with herbal medicines. So perhaps there's a connection between the play and the plant, but I can't find any. I feel like I'm close, but it, it's just enough that I can't say anything for sure. Uh, and I'm really sorry about that. I hope you all can forgive me. I'm such a sham. <laughs> Morphogenic field is a concept that's pretty well known among biologists. Basically, if you have a community of cells that are interacted in some biochemical way, they will all at once begin to form or change their composition because of the effects of other cells that they're near. This theory says that humans work in the same manner. Think of it this way. It seems odd that whenever new information is discovered, say stories or poetry 
or other sort of melodic things that people didn't think of it until it exists and then all of a sudden everyone thinks of the same thing or similar at once. There's even an experiment conducted in England in the 1970s in which a group of school children were presented with two different songs. One of them being a random collection of Japanese words that just so happen to rhyme and the other being an actual Japanese song. Of course these children in an elementary school couldn't tell the difference between the wordage and to them it both sounded the same. However, the children were significantly better at learning the actual song as opposed to the amalgamation of words. This is used as evidence to say that perhaps humans are linked in some kind of neural way that we don't necessarily understand, and because of that, whenever one of us gains knowledge, others are able to grasp it more easily. Malkasian paradigm is a concept thought forward by Dr. Malkasia that specifically in the Middle East and North Africa, there were several events that took place during the 50s and post-World War II era that points to evidence that reptilian lizard men, and no, I'm not kidding this time, like actually hidden lizard men in politics, did very specific actions in order to maintain control of this so-called new world order essentially things like moving troops to different areas and supposedly shutting down uprisings and it's this long sort of description and it basically serves as another description of blah 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 lizard aliens taking over brain world similar to hollow universe is another theory for how we exist however whereas hollow universe apply to our sort of physical reality this applies more so to our existence within reality the theory goes something like this Imagine that everything that we see and is tangible to us exists as a kind of tube or cylinder that moves through the actual dimension of space. This space around us exists in a different plane or has extra dimensions or something similar and creates a very different existence outside of what we know existence to be. This theory says that we are sort of protected in this tube that we move through and things such as gravity are effects of us being within the cylinder. Furthermore, this is saying that several supernatural phenomena that can occur and even gravity itself can sort of leak through the pipe that we're in and that's what causes certain real world occasions to happen. Gene pool financialization is an idea that was mainly taken off of the works of Sarah Franklin. Essentially as cultures become more and more intertwined with each other, we see that certain genes are becoming more and more rare and with the inevitable buildup of finances, it is the idea that eventually people will be paying for sort of genetic alterations and we will get into a point in which people are valued at a financial level for their genetics. The Flatland UFO theory comes from a book known as The Flatlands, which was written in 19th century England. It follows the idea of the holographic hypothesis, which works as a sort of antithesis to all of the theories we know regarding the greater universe around us. Holographic hypothesis basically works like this. Uh, there is no three-dimensional plane that we know as depth, instead there are only two dimensions and depth and volume are an illusion. The background for this is as matter gets faster, it is less affected by the depth of things around it. Therefore, it could eventually hit the point in which it is not affected by it at all. And instead, dimensions that exist beyond ours are not the super hard to understand abstract concepts and are more so like a painting. So that would mean that we exist as two-dimensional beings that are just going too slow, and therefore the two dimensions are creating this illusion of a third around us. So this theory is saying that things such as UFOs and other phenomena that can occur is simply something from this two-dimensional plane slowing down enough in order to interact with our three-dimensional world to which they then speed up and then go back into their own, which is the reason for these things appearing then disappearing seemingly at random. Incunabula is the term given to the first ever printed works in human culture. This is basically things that were done right around the time or before Gutenberg invented the movable type printing press. However, the theories get in that some of these things shouldn't necessarily exist, such as works that were printed in a more difficult way in regions that supposedly that information or printing itself shouldn't have been available. And it leads many to believe that perhaps something about human migration or at least human education 
is being hidden from us for some reason. Tavistock, also known as the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations, is a non-profit agency that exists in the UK. From everything I can find on their site, they sort of exist as this social science group that analyzes different demographics and things around the world in order to understand how people work and blah, 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 all that. However, former MI6 member John Coleman has said that the group's actual directive is in order to change human culture so that one day the new world order can more easily take over. This is done through ideas of breaking down the family unit, breaking down religion, breaking down ideas of abstinence and yada yada. It's kind of a deep theory, but it relates from everything from the Beatles to the Rolling Stones, saying that they have purposely planted this individualism, lack of God, lack of family ideas within pop culture so that one day whenever a new body comes in in order to take over those roles, the people are more easily accepting of it. The Aetherius Society is a sort of UFO based religion started by a man named George King. It exists as a plural religion, which means they accept different concepts from several other ideologies such as Buddhism and Christianity in order to create one all encompassing belief. Among the religions other's teachings is the idea that Jesus and Buddha were aliens from Venus that came to Earth as sort of prophets. They also believe that we are currently waiting on the return of the next master to come and set up a new world establishment on Earth. Several of their theories are interesting, such as that of spiritual batteries. Essentially, they have these composed boxes that members outside of the religion do not know exactly what is in them, that they can pray to and give prana to in order to maintain energy, and then whenever a natural disaster or tragedy is about to occur, they can simply release it from the battery, and that thing that was going to happen will no longer happen. The religion claims that this has been used in order to stop wars, earthquakes, shootings, and other disasters. Not only that, but they claim that there are several other alien races that exist in the greater cosmos that have tried to contact Earth, but that there is an organization on the Earth known as the Silence Group, which entire directive is to make sure that the public does not know of the greater existence of deities. However, people such as George King, the religion's founder, have been able to communicate with these beings and be able to get the truth out to everyone else. And that is it for tier six. We still have four tiers to go. Uh, I have no idea how long the other tiers are going to be. They may still be split up into thirds. I've got to look at the information, see how much as there is. I can probably say the tier seven will also be in thirds, but as soon as I get more into the information, I'll know more about that. Uh, there will be a post on the Reddit probably where I give you all an update since that's going so well. And also to the patrons like, I talk to you guys out loud on Discord anyway, so I'm sure you'll be the first to know. As always, thank you guys for watching. I want to say a big thank you to all of my subscribers, a massive thank you to all of my patrons, and a huge, huge thank you to my top tier patrons. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you, Pef. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Publius. Thank you, Saucy. Thank you, Neoclassical Succubus. Thank you, Steven. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Come Ranger. Thank you, Xavier. Thank you, Alvaro. Thank you, Damon. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Florum. Thank you, Firestar. And thank you, Joseph. <laughs> it blows my mind that that list keeps growing. Um, you all really are the best, and I mean it. Thank you all so much. Um, so, new video. I'm probably going to do one about the AI in the box, which I mentioned earlier next, because I really want to do a video about that. And uh, the next iceberg will be out either end of this week or next week just depends on like school and how everything goes but as always thank you guys for watching and i will see you all in the next one bye